honestly, guys, I don't understand how anyone could actually live in the city of Seattle. Seattle, Washington was ground zero for the Chaz Chop Zone back in 2020 during the George Floyd worship, where he was actually elevated to Jesus status. Far left extremists actually took off, took over, I should say, a police precinct. The police were allowed to do nothing, nothing. It became a dumpster fire. It looked like something out of Mad Max. The criminals just took over this section of the city. How is it, guys, that police were able to do nothing? Now, for the people living in Seattle, I don't understand how anybody could actually live in that city. And when it comes to that Chaz Chop Zone, people actually died. Only when people died were the police actually allowed to go in and retake the city. I mean, it was absolutely stunning, guys. Seattle is a dumpster fire. But people in Seattle, they don't actually seem to actually change their voting. Yeah, you'll vote somebody else out. But then you'll get somebody else that's just as bad, if not worse. Look at Chicago. Lori Lightfoot to Brandon Johnson. So now, guys, June Pride Month and Seattle does have a pride parade. And actually, guys, it's kind of, you know, changed into pride year when it comes to the whole pride thing. You know, funny how veterans only get one day. But yet the alphabets get a full month which is really translated into a full year. Well, guys, we need to talk about this uh, pride parade that's going to be happening in Seattle because, yet again, the police can do nothing. Look at this, guys. Seattle Pride bans police from marching in uniform at LGBTQ parade. The police cannot even be in uniform, which leads me to believe folks that and I couldn't find this. So. I don't even think that the police can actually be armed at this thing. If I'm wrong, let me know that in the comments. But this is stunning, guys, that the police are not allowed to be in uniform because the alphabet mafia does not like police. So let's read some of this, guys. The Seattle Pride Parade will once again ban police officers from marching in uniform at the event, doubling down on last year's exclusion from the supposedly inclusive event. Yeah, so last year, and I just found this out, police were actually banned. But I'm not surprised, you know, considering the way Seattle is. Guys, the criminals are running Seattle. The criminals are really, really running the West Coast, to tell you the truth. It's amazing. It says here, however, the event will continue to benefit from the protection of ununiformed police officers who will be at the parade for security as required by the organization's city permit, according to the Seattle Times. So what? Even if the police are actually there, what can they really do? I'm curious about that. What can the Seattle police actually do? If something actually pops off, something is telling me that they're not going to be armed and the police actually should be there in uniform and they should actually be able to arrest people. But let's go on. Seattle Pride Interim Executive Director Nor Wagner said in a statement that the outlet to the outlet that the events board of directors instituted the exclusionary policy last year. Based on the results of a community survey, uh, quote, as well as the queer community's long history of distrust of law enforcement, criminalization of LGBTQIA plus people and police violence against marginalized groups. The genesis of the pride movement, close quote. Wander also told The Times that organizers remain in close contact with the Seattle Police Department. Until last year, SPD uniform officers marched in the parade and have been doing so since 1994. But, you know, in a post-George Floyd world, police cannot actually show themselves as police officers. 
amazing. Organizers said the 2022 decision to ban officers was, quote, due to the history of Stonewall Sunday and the fact that pride was birthed from a ride against police brutality. Seattle pride will not permit police uniforms, police vehicles, any police insignia or police propaganda to walk in any parade contingency. Seattle firefighter, however, will be allowed to march in the parade in uniform. So they're going to allow only the fire department. But if you are a police officer, no. What is the police actually going to be able to do if something actually pops off? Now, this is probably why they don't want the police to actually do anything. Look at this. And I cannot play this clip here because we actually do play this clip. Then we're going to get um, removed from YouTube. But this actually happened last year when the police were banned. Naked bicyclists circling the route in front of a large crowd of children. And I do mean butt naked. They're actually exposing their man parts while they're actually riding on a bicycle. Yeah, that is pretty disgusting, guys. Very, very disgusting. Capitol Hill Pride, a different local LGBTQIA plus organization in Seattle, announced they will also be continuing their ban on uniform officers at their march and rally the day before the Seattle Pride Parade. SPD Chief Adrian Diaz announced last year that officers wouldn't march in the parade, but published an open letter calling out uh, organizers decision. Uh, quote, the executive board's decision described as discriminatory, demeaning, hateful and adequated by SPD missing persons de unit detective Amy LeClaire has been met with sadness by SPD's more than 100 LGBTQIA plus officers, commanders and civilians. Now, just because you are a part of the LGBT community as a police officer, they don't like you. They don't like you. You know, just like um, the Wotes actually say that police officers are white supremacists. Even if you actually have a black police officer, they still look at you as a white supremacist. This is the way that these people actually do think. I mean, this is crazy right here. It is. I would never, ever, ever want to visit Seattle at all. Now, this actually leads me to another story here. Check this out. There is actually a realtor that is operating a rainbow underground railroad to help people, LGBT alphabet people, leave Texas because of laws actually being passed in Texas. They consider this to be anti LGBT laws. And last I checked, if you are a part of the alphabet community and you wanted to leave Texas, guess what? There is no slavery. You can actually leave. Nobody's actually stopping you. You can sell your home and you can actually move on wherever you want to go. The laws that are actually being passed here in Texas are to protect children because we know that the alphabet mafia, they want to actually go after children. And it, it's amazing, guys, because people out there in Texas, the activists out here, it's ridiculous. Now. Look at this. The end of this month can't come soon enough for Paul Lewis. He'll get to hand over the keys to his house in a Dallas suburb and start a long drive north where he'll become the latest LGBTQ plus Texan to lead the state in hopes of finding a friendlier place to call home. Uh, quote, parts of me hates the fact that I'm leaving Texas, the home I've always known, Lewis said. But part of me is also excited by the fact that I get to start a new chapter. The lifelong Texan committed in January to begin looking for somewhere else to move. He explained how two factors ultimately solidified that decision, pointing to the growing number of LGBTQ plus restrictions introduced this legislative session 
as well as the frequency of deadly mass shootings happening in the state. He noted his home in Carrollton is 20 minutes from the Allen Premium out- Outlets, where a gunman killed eight people in May. Plus, the governor recently signed a bill into law that would ban transgender minors. Keep that in mind. Minors from receiving certain, quote, health care options to help in their transition. He says, quote, I don't feel like Texas is my home anymore. Now, the only la- uh, laws that are actually being passed is to protect children. Guess what, guys? Pride parades. Guess what? They still happen in Texas. If you want to transition yourself as an adult, nobody's stopping you. Even here in Texas, nobody is stopping you. But yet he feels like, oh, I must flee. I must run away. It's ridiculous. Now, check this out. He ended up selling his home through a real estate service launch last summer by the Dallas based broker, uh, Bob McCraney, who sought to help alphabet people list their homes in Texas and then connect them with an agent in another state or even a different country uh, where they like to go next. McCraney initially called it Flea Texas, but soon changed the name to reflect a broader group of people expressing interest in the service. Uh, quote, what we discovered was we got so much um, response from other states that we decided to expand and become Flea Red States, McCraney said Tuesday. Uh, we've helped 27 groups of people so far get out. I mean, this is ridiculous, guys. This is ridiculous. I don't know what this person is actually going to be going. I mean, you have every right to actually sell your home, make a profit, and then move where you want to. But to say that Texas is harmful, anti-LGBTQ plus laws, I'm trying to figure out where is it in any laws where LGBT people can actually go out here in Texas and live their lives. I'm still trying to figure it out. Now, children, they're too young. They are too young to actually make life altering decisions, you know, that can actually affect their bodies forever. They're too young. You shouldn't be doing that. We don't allow um, kids to actually drink. They can't own a weapon. None of that. But if they, but if they want to cut off their genitals and um, stop puberty, they can. That sounds ludicrous to me. It just does. But that's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white network fans, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time.